according to our guest producer engineer, Stuart Epps, Paul Rogers of Bad Company was the man. When it came to voices, he was the guy. And Stuart Epps worked with Robert Plant, Elton John, and a host of others. But he told us something else about Paul Rogers. He's a one-take guy. Doesn't like taking two takes. Free, Bad Company, Paul Rogers, The Firm, and a lot more with Stuart Epps on Rock History Music. I was at a concert in Vancouver because I'm not sure if Paul still lives there, but he did for a while. And I looked across and I I remember looking, I'm going, wow, that guy over here in a small club, that guy looks just like he was with a lady, uh, probably his wife. I don't know that much about Paul. (laughs) But I remember looking across and going, well, he's not a large man. And I remember going, that's got to be Paul Rogers. And and everyone was looking at him and everyone was too intimidated. I mean, one of the greatest singers of all time to talk. What was your experience like working with him? But actually, Paul is is Canadian. Is he? When I I looked him up the other day on Wikipedia, and it, and it's down as English, uh, British, stroke Canadian. So he must. Well, he fell in love and married a Canadian lady. I think she was a beauty queen, and um, he's obviously got uh, you know what a nationality now of of Canada. So I'm sure he still lives there, you know, but. Um, but working with Paul was, uh, I mean, it did have its ups and downs, I suppose, but there were definitely more ups than downs. I mean, that guy, like I say, when we did The uh, the Firm, you know, he, he just, it's like it's magic. That's magic happening in front of you because all you're worried about is that the machine doesn't break. You know, you're sitting there while they're doing the take, just praying that nothing goes wrong here because you know this is it. Because the, it's it's a performance that is only going to get repeated in this way if I've got if I've recorded it properly, you know. So um, he, he's probably you know Elton John is an amazing singer as well, and I've been lucky to work with amazing singers. But you got to say Paul Rogers is is just it really. And uh, and then we did um, uh, what did we do? We did the uh, well, we did the firm that I was talking about. But then he formed a band with Kenny Jones. Uh, called the law and um and similarly we did that in a big studio uh can't remember what it's called now big studio and and he would do the same thing I, i'd say well we're we going to do the voice again he said what for i just did it that was it i'm not singing it again <laughs> i think once we were doing uh we were doing something and uh halfway through he said stop stop i said what's the what's the problem he said oh i've got a problem he said i made a mistake I said, it's all right, I'll drop, we can drop in. He said, drop in? What are you talking about? I'm not dropping in. I'll have to go back to the beginning and start again. <laughs> so that's, um, and Paul, you know, he, uh, well, he's just a natural. He's, he's just, I mean, of course, he's a good songwriter as well, but he's, he's, a, he's, a nat- he's just the most brilliant singer, basically. So it was an honor. It was an honor to be in the control room with him out there, definitely. What what do you look for? I mean, I, I've heard you. I, I've watched a lot of your interviews, and and I, I and I get the the Zeppelin quote as far as people are going. Well, you know, that was a lot of years ago, but has anyone touched that? But that's normal. That's going to happen in any any industry. You're going to get the pinnacle, and, it, and yeah. sports it happens an awful lot that you know the the, the goalposts change, and maybe the stats change because the games change. What do you look for when you're when people send you tapes? <laughs> um, what keeps me going is people sending me new music, uh, which, you know, the, the story is that um, with the invention of the internet, which obviously sounds ridiculous, but to me it wasn't that long ago. Um, so now, and also with the invention of people having home studios, which to me also isn't that long ago. So everyone's furiously recording at home. Very few bands, artists are going to commercial studios. I got fed up with trying to uh, tell them, well, we've got to go here, we've got to go there, we've got to go to Abbey Road, we've got to do this. So, um, all right, so, you know, if you can't beat them. So I said, all right, send me what you're doing at home. Let me have a listen. And I listened to it, and I, because actually recording at home, in home studios, is relatively easy. The equipment's very cheap, rel- uh, comparatively cheap, and, and you can do it. But creating something magical... Uh, Mix-wise, you know, production-wise, that still takes um, a bit of experience, just like anything else. I mean, you know, I hate to sort of bring brain surgery into it, but, I mean, 
you know, maybe someone will come out with a brain surgery kit that you can actually do at home, but it does have its dangers. You know, maybe you're better off getting a surgeon who's done it for 30 years and a bit crazy uh, an analogy there, but um, it's the same thing. So people are sending me their tracks. One of the first things is the drum sound. If it's a rock band, it's very hard to get a big, you know, Zeppelin like or Beatles like great drum sound at home. So I, I said, right, I'll tell you what, I can make the sound great. That's if the music is good, you know, and, and there is a lot of great music out there. Um, I'm on a lot of music sites. Music X-Ray is one of them where there's uh, hundreds, if not thousands of artists and musicians and songwriters, you know, many more than there were when I started out because it's a much bigger, broader music business now because of the TV and everyone wants to have a go and it looks like it's easy, you know. So, you see, the thing is that I, I am a musician myself. I always wanted to be in a band, but I was in a band, was a singer in a band. But my job is now and has been for many years is record producing engineering. So it's a job. It's a, that's what my job is. And I, and I, and I kind of picked up quite a lot. So I'm probably quite good at it now. I ought to be after all these years, you see. So, but it is still a job. And I try and tell people it's a job just like any other. Um, all right. Maybe a little bit different, but, um, one of the things is that a lot of a lot of youngsters, because I'm a record producer, and not not everyone knows what a record producer is. So, with the, some of the clients, I have to spend the first couple of days telling them what I do, and explaining to them that I also charge for what I do, because they've got this mis misinterpretation that it's a bit like a film producer, and that I'm going to pay for everything, I'm going to do everything, you know which is what film producers do. And I say, oh, God, you got that wrong. I'm like a film director is what the comparison is, you know. Film producer is, is uh, record producer is much different. You know, it's like the arranger, it's getting the sounds. It's uh, So I kind of sometimes have to explain it to youngsters. And um, I don't know, if it, it's not a dying art. It's just that people don't, if unless they've studied it, they don't know what's involved so you know in the past when i was working at the soul studios for gus dudgeon elton's producer uh you know obviously it was a different world for me then you know he's already working with the artist i'm his engineer i'm his producer or when i was working with jimmy page running his studio but now i'm working with uh, the general public as it were which is a little bit frightening um, but it's also exciting, you know, because, I mean, people walk through this door, you know, like a maybe a kid. Well, it's not really a kid. They might be 24, 25 years old. We're about to record a demo of theirs. And I say, how many, you know, you, how many times you've been in the studio? And so this is my first time. Yeah. What is that all about? I can't even, it's, I can't relate to that. It's very difficult. But it's also exciting to see someone progress you know progress and then to use my talents to be able to explain to them that there's the vocal mic but it's not just for singing in you know it's for acting in and it's for you know so it, it's kind of been, it's obviously good to be able to use all the experience that I've gained over these years that unless you start using it and explaining it you don't even know that you've got it do you We'll have more from Stuart Epps coming up the next few days. Remember, he produced so many people, engineered a lot of people. He was the engineer on the Coda album with Jimmy Page. Worked with The Firm, Twisted Sister, Elton John, Paul Rogers, Jimmy Page, and a host of others. If you want to get produced by him, he is available. Go to his website, stuartepps.co.uk. Remember, subscribe to our channel. We always love it when you join our team, like our videos, spread the word, spread the videos on social media, and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. 